One of my favorite consoles of all time is the Xbox 360. It was an amazing system. Microsoft just absolutely hit it out of the park. Well, at least software-wise. I mean, you did have the Red Ring of Death. But there were so many awesome Xbox 360 games, and it was a very exciting time to be a gamer during this era of gaming. Now, of course, the Xbox 360 storefront just shut down, and a lot of things went with it. Sure, you can access some stuff through your Xbox One or your Xbox Series X, but the Xbox 360 storefront had a lot of nostalgia for people, a lot of games for people, and of course there were Xbox Live arcade games. Now, some of these made the jump to the other platforms, but many of them were delisted and delisted years ago, so there's really no way to access those and give a company money for their hard work of putting the game on the Xbox 360. So in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at Xbox 360 emulation, because honestly, it's pretty easy to set up with one or two little caveats, but you should be able to play Xbox 360 games in absolutely no time by using this video. So hit that subscribe button if you're new, and let's hop into some Xbox 360 emulation. Alrighty, so first and foremost, go into your favorite web browser and type in Xenia, because Xenia will be the emulator that we are indeed using for this. Now, right now, Xenia is pretty much the only Xbox 360 emulator out there, and you can see it doesn't really get updated all that often. And it's an unfortunate thing. You know, work started back in 2015 with this. So, you know, you're not getting the bells and whistles of something like RC PSX3, which is, or RC PS3, which is a PlayStation 3 emulator. I've shown you guys lots of different emulators before and kind of how they work in terms of, you know, having a user interface that's very easy to navigate. And Xenia is nothing like that. So we're just going to go ahead, go over to download, and we'll download the master build of Xenia. After downloading Xenia, we're going to go ahead and find out where it is and go ahead and extract everything that is within it. So you'll end up getting this Zevia master, or Xenia, I should say Zevia. I love that drink. But you'll end up with the Xenia master folder. And when you click on Xenia, you'll see, hey, it's okay there's there's not a lot going on here as far as you know being able to customize things being able to change things up this is all you get with the emulator at least from a visual perspective now there are other ways to mess around with things and i'm going to go ahead and show you that now because you'll probably want to know how to access this and how to change things within xenia you're going to want to go ahead and go into your documents folder and as you can see here, I have lots of old thumbnails that I've made here. And we're going to go ahead and want to go down to the Xenia file. Within this, we will see a file called Xenia config. And this is how you configure everything for Xenia. And yes, it is very, very intimidating. But I do want to show you guys one thing right off the jump that you need to do. Because like I said at the start of this video, one of the coolest things about xbox 360 were the xbox 360 live arcade games now you're going to want to scroll down here you're going to see lots of different things that you can mess around with but you're going to want to come down to content and license mask by default it's on zero and i'm not really sure why that is because you can see here zero means no licenses enabled changing it to one will be the first license enabled generally the full version license in xbox live arcade titles so we're going to go ahead and change that to a number one and then we will save it as well so that everything is saved in our file. And you can look down here at some of the different things that you can mess around with. I've honestly never really messed around with any of this stuff because it's just, it's very intimidating to me. I am sure I could, you know, get better performance and stuff. But like, I see, like here, I would rather use the Vulcan driver than use Direct 3D 12, you know? But. I, I, like, I don't know if it's like, do I put Vulcan in here to change it? But you know what? Let's do it. Let's let's freaking do it, guys. Let's get a little bit risky here. So now maybe it'll use the Vulcan emu uh, processor in order to because Vulcan works better than direct does. But we've made a few changes here. We've probably screwed everything up, but maybe we haven't. So now we're going to get into the games itself. So we're back in our Zevia folder here, and we're going to access a game. We'll go with the Simpsons arcade game. Now, where do you get the games, RGT? I'm not telling you, but I'm sure there is an archive on the internet somewhere, .org. I'm sure there's a layer somewhere 
that's controlled by someone named Vims that can tell you where to get these games. Google is your friend with this. There's tons of different websites out there. Just try them out. But this will actually be a good way to see if when we accessed our configuration folder, if we did indeed make the change to save the file so that we can actually play the full version of the game. Now, one thing that's cool about Xenia is just plug in a USB controller. I'm just using a random, oh, it is, look, it's using Vulkan, according to the top there. Very cool, very good stuff. Um, so, I'm using a standard Xbox 360 control or a, uh oh, I don't think Vulcan. Oh no, Vulcan's working fine. So we're using a standard controller here. It's just a kind of mimicked Xbox 360, but you can see here, we do have access to the full game of Simpsons arcade game, a game that was released on the Xbox 360, but of course was delisted. So you could start on any stage you want. What a great game this is. I have the arcade one-up system, but I, I, you know, stuff like this, is it's just cool to have. And yes, you could play the main version of this, but there's something, I don't know, there's something cool about just playing the Xbox 360 version of this game. Of course, there are way more taxing titles that we can check out as well, whether they're full releases or Xbox 360 um, live games. So let's go ahead and check out something that's a little bit more demanding. And I'll tell you guys kind of how the emulation works on this as far as how far your mileage is going to vary. So next up, we're checking out one of the coolest games on Xbox Live Arcade, of course, Afterburner Climax. Now you might notice in the top of the screen, we have changed back to Direct 3D 12 because for whatever reason it was crashing with Vulcan and that's kind of one of the things that you're gonna run into with I mean really emulators in general but when it comes to Xbox 360 stuff it can be a little bit trickier there can be hiccups and stuff because a lot of it I mean it's contingent on your system this is not my main emulation computer that's actually behind me this is what i use just to do work on uh for the most part so it's not really set up great for emulation but you could see here like this is a visually pleasing 3d game that i'm absolutely terrible at by the way that looks and runs great on this computer and this computer i think it's a 2080 so it's not anything too beastly but when you get to like the retail releases and stuff like that, you're gonna run into some problems. Some games just have no compatibility at all. And you know, it's it's kind of a shame because I feel like this is such this has such a great library of games that I hope and pray we eventually get to a point where the emulation can be improved. See, we did a special attack there, we had a little bit of a hiccup. Is that going to happen for everyone's computer? Maybe, maybe not. Like it, it just kind of depends on what sort of rig you got running and you know what you're doing kind of in the background because i'm sure <laughs> recording this video isn't helping at all so you kind of have a general idea about this like how it works and stuff and like i said once you kind of get into it, it it's somewhat easy to understand it's somewhat easy to set up it's just that your mileage will vary with a lot of games especially retail releases and it kind of can be a bit of a pain in the ass i mean you know if you got fast internet the file sizes aren't all that big or anything like that so you're not wasting too much time kind of checking out some games i know i've played gears of war before in the past skate it's kind of hit or miss with stuff like this it all really comes down to your rig so if you got a decent little rig or even a rog ally or something like that i have played uh, Xbox 360 games on my ROG Ally and on my Steam Deck, so you can get some of the games to run on there as well. This was just a basic tutorial on how to sort of set everything up. You can see it's pretty damn easy. Make sure you go ahead and change that one thing if you want to play Xbox Live Arcade games, though, so that way you're getting the full experience. If you got any questions, let me know in the comments section down below. I probably won't answer them, but maybe there'll be someone helpful in the comments that will. It's, it's very overbearing to look at those comments. And if you learned something today, make sure you hit that subscribe button. We're on the road to 500,000 subscribers at the time of the filming of this video, and I would love to have you on board with it. Hope you learned something today. Hope you go play some Xbox 360 games. And as always, I'll catch you guys on the next video. Later.